Hey guys, I'm back. It is book time. I told you this morning that I wanted us to read the book, How to Make Bubbles. I thought this would be a fun book to read today since you are going to have all weekend to do activities that you pick for yourself. And I thought maybe you would have some time to try to make your own bubbles. And if you don't know how to make bubbles, now you do. Before we start reading the book, let's sing our parts of the book song. For the last two days, I've been singing all the words for you. Today, I'm only going to sing parts of the song. And when I pause, I want you to tell me what the name of the part of the book that I'm pointing to is called. So I'll sing it slowly so that you have time to chime in. This is the of the book. 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 Nice job. You said front, back, spine, title, and author down here. Maybe next time you can sing it all by yourself and send me some videos. So again, the title of our book is How to Make Bubbles. And you can see there's a little girl on the front cover and it looks like there's some bubbles floating around. And she's holding a bubble wand down here. We're going to go ahead and start by carefully opening my book to the first page. Here's the title again, How to Make Bubbles. Ooh, and this book is unlike any other book that we've read before. Before the story starts, there's a page called Table of Contents. And on it, it shows that our book is separated into sections. And there's a page number next to it. So it says Getting Started. That's on page four. Making Bubbles. That section is on page six. How does it work? Find out on page 18. And then down here, it says there's something called a glossary on page 22. What's a glossary? I'm going to go to page 22 to find out what that means. Let's see. 22. I made it to page 22. And on the top, it says glossary. And it looks like glossary means vocabulary words. So in red, you can see words that maybe you don't know what they mean. And on the glossary page, it will tell you the vocabulary word, and then it'll tell you what it means. It'll give you the definition. So while we're reading the book, if there's any words that maybe I don't know, or I think maybe you don't know, we can come to the glossary page and read the definition to find out what the word means. Let me go back to the table of contents. It says read more on page 23. Let's see what is on page 23. Here you go. Am I on the right page, guys? Yes. It says read more. And right here has some names of other people and names of other books where you can learn more about how to make bubbles. It says internet sites also on page 23. That's right here. Internet sites. And it shows you some other websites that you can visit so that you can learn some more things also. And the last item on our table of contents is 
index. That section is found on page 24. That is a big number, page 24. That is the very last section on the last page of our book. It says index. And on this page, it has different keywords like air, bubble wands, dish soap, and it can tell you on what page you can read about those things. So if you want to read, if you can't remember what page that they were talking about pipe cleaners on, then I want to come to the index page on page 24 and look for the word pipe cleaners right here. And it can tell me that on page 12, that's where I can go to read about pipe cleaners. Now that we went through the table of contents, I'm going to start reading our book. On the first page it says, getting started. Bubbles float in the sink. Bubbles pop in a glass of soda. Mix together simple ingredients and make your own super bubbles. Not regular bubbles, super bubbles. On page five it says, here's what you need. One gallon of warm water, one tablespoon of glycerin. Hmm, what's glycerin? And I remember that the table of contents said that I can go to the glossary on page 22. Remember the glossary is where we can go to see what a certain word means. Here I am on the glossary and I found the word glycerin. It says a syrupy liquid used in soaps, perfumes, and other products. Oh, that's what glycerin is. Now you know. What else do I need? I need a spoon, a drinking straw, potato masher, spatula, or other utensils with holes, one cup of dish soap, a large plastic tub, a wire coat hanger, and pipe cleaners. Here's a picture of the items. Hmm. Next page. Making bubbles. Pour one gallon of warm water into a large plastic tub. Add one cup of dish soap. Next, add one tablespoon of glycerin. Remember, that's the syrupy liquid that they sometimes put in soaps or perfumes. And here she is doing that. Slowly stir the mixture. Try not to make suds. Hmm. What is that? Mixture. So slowly stir the mixture. If I look in the glossary, here's the word mixture in red. A mixture is something made up of different things mixed together. Oh, that makes sense. Because they are mixing together the dish soap, the water, and the glycerin. That's why it's called a mixture. It says, try not to make suds. Suds are little bubbles that you sometimes make if you stir too quickly. Now you're going to let the bubble mixture sit for two or three days. That's a kind of a long time, right? I might do some research to see if we have to wait the whole time, or maybe if we can just wait one or two days. Make your own bubble wand. 
by shaping a wire hanger into a circle. Wrap pipe cleaners around the hanger. Oh, so that's why you need the hanger. I don't think I have a wire hanger in my closet, so I might think of something else that I could use if I can't find a wire hanger. And I'll let you know what I think of. Ask an adult to carry the tub outside. Why do you think we should carry the tub outside and not do it inside? Hmm. Blow lots of bubbles with a straw. Dip a potato masher into the tub. Blow through the holes. Hmm. Oh my gosh. It looks like so much fun, guys. I think I'm going to have to do this experiment with you all, too. Put the hanger into the mixture. Pull it out slowly. Gently move it through the air. Let's see, gentle movements, right? Is this a gentle movement? Mm -mm. This is a gentle movement. Let's see how she's doing it right here in this picture. Uh-oh, it says, you may have to try several times before you make a giant bubble. Sometimes it might be difficult for you to make a giant bubble when you first start, but if you keep on trying, then you'll be able to make a giant bubble, just like she did here. Hmm. How does it work? Blowing air can make a thin film of a soap stretch. When stretched too far, the film snaps closed. Air trapped inside makes a round bubble. So when you're blowing into the soap, it's gonna blow up like this, looking like a bubble. But then when it touches, like in this picture, when it touches the grass, it goes pop, and it disappears. Bubbles burst when they dry out. The soapy film gets too thin and the air inside escapes. A bubble also breaks when it touches something dry. Oh, there it is. It touched the grass and the grass must have been dry because it looks like it says pop, pop, pop. And that's it. We get to our glossary page. If there are some other words that you did not know, then you can come to this page and read the definitions. If you would like to read more about how to make bubbles, you can come to these websites right here and right here. And if there's a part of the book that you really liked or you need to listen to again, Come look for the word that you want to read more about and then go to the correct page number, okay? You can rewind the YouTube video and go back if you missed anything. I think since today's Friday, maybe after I'm done with all my chores and cleaning up and eating lunch and dinner, maybe with someone in my family, I can make my bubble mixture so that tomorrow on Saturday or on Sunday, I can go outside into my yard or into my patio and make some super bubbles with you. If you decide to do this experiment at home, send me some pictures or some videos of you with your super bubbles. I hope you enjoyed the book today. Bye guys.